My next guest is a recipient of the MacArthur Genius Grant, and New York Magazine describes him as the Mr. Rogers of Columbus, Ohio. It doesn't get better than that. Poet, essayist, and cultural critic, Hanif Abu-Rakib, is here for our keynote conversation tonight. He is out with a new must-read book called There's Always This Year on Basketball and Ascension. I am so honored that you are here. I'm so thrilled. Thank you for having me. Um, this book is about basketball. It's about Ohio's most famous basketball player, LeBron James. But it is not a sports book. It's so much more than that. Tell us. I think so. It's also a book about the passage of time. And it's also a book about what it is to love a place and what it is to make it or make it out of a place. Uh, it is trying to juggle a lot of different themes about life lensed through basketball, which helped me make sense of the bigger questions. You talk about what it means to make it, and more importantly, who deserves right. to make it. Can you explain that? Sure. I like to think of it broadly, not just who deserves to make it in the sense of who deserves to make it to the NBA or who deserves to make it to some larger platform, but who deserves a life that is sustainable? Who deserves a life that they can survive well in? I am someone who has lived many different lives to get to this life that I have right now, and I didn't believe myself capable of surviving all of them, but to have made it in these small increments, to have made it um, to a place where I can look at the world a bit more patiently and more generously, I would take that form of making it over many other forms. I want to know how you got there because you spent some time in your early 20s in jail. Yes. You didn't always have a place to live. Um, what made you make that turn and start writing? I don't know if it was a turn as so much as I think in order to survive, I needed to foster a healthy imagination. I needed to have an imagination that was robust enough to dream a better world, not just for myself, but a better world for multiple other people, a better world that everyone could survive in or at least attempt to survive in well. And so there was a lot of dreaming on my own that just kind of flowed into writing. I think my writing specifically is rooted in a depth of imagination and a depth of care and a depth of affection that I think came through struggle. You know, through struggle, I dreamed the world that I wanted to live in, and I, I'm writing my way towards it inch by inch. And you moved back to your hometown, Columbus, yes. Ohio, where you have been called the Mr. <laughs> Rogers of Columbus. How did that be and why? I cannot think of a higher compliment. That is the highest compliment I've ever received, perhaps. I, I don't know. It's not, it's not intentional in a way. I think I just try to live with some level of care for my community. I'm very I'm curious and very interested in people. I think that the real doorway that opens to loving people well is through just joyful questioning of, you know, where are you from? What do you do? What are you, what are you interested in that we might be interested in together? So much of my work is also reaching for these inquiries of, I'm trying to share things with you that I love in the hopes that you too might love them. And then we have a common ground with which we can open up a better doorway to love each other well. And so perhaps that pulls me closer to Mr. Rogers than I expected, but that's, that's a high compliment. I'm glad to be close to Mr. Rogers in some way. You love to take pictures of sunsets. I do. Tell me why. Many people can roll their eyes, yeah. say it's cliche, it's corny, but it's not. It, and even if it is corny, I'm not opposed to being corny. I'm, never, <laughs> I'm not afraid of being corny. I embrace the level of corniness that I operate. But the truth is, I am distinctly aware of the amount of time that I am operating with and that it is not infinite. And therefore, it is important for me to slow down and consider the things that some would consider mundane, the things that we encounter every day, but they're not the same every day. I could take a hundred pictures of a hundred sunsets. Not all of them would be the same sunset. The sunset from my corner to your corner is not the same sunset. The sunset from my window today is not the same as the sunset from whatever window I'll be looking at tomorrow. And to say, I have considered that the sun sets differently from every corner of the world I can possibly touch is to offer a kind of slowness, a slow moment through which I can consider the world more generously. And I think that keeps me uh, aligned joyfully with the passage of time to say, I have not considered every possible version of myself there is to come. And uh, the way that I consider that and keep considering that generously is to look at the mundane things as not at all mundane. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.